Okay, I'd like to show you how to put type on a circle. Let's first create a new document. We'll go into the File menu to New. And let's create a document that has one artboard. And let's make it 5 by 5 inches square. And click OK. I'm going to the Window menu to Workspace, and let's choose Typography, because we'll be working a lot with type in this exercise. Okay, we're going to make a logo that has a sun in the middle and the words blue sky at the top and hotel and spa at the bottom. So let's start by making a circle. We'll go click and hold on the rectangle tool and go to the ellipse tool and then click once on the artboard. And let's make a circle that is 2 by 2 and click OK. Now I'll get my black arrow, my selection tool, and just move up the circle a bit so it's approximately in the center. Now, I have the bounding box showing, but um, let's not show it for this exercise. Let's go into the View menu and say Hide Bounding Box. Okay. The next thing we'll do is go down here in the Layers panel and double-click on Layer 1, and we'll change it to the name of the layer to Sun, S-U-N, and click OK. And then we're going to make a copy of that layer, because we want to copy the circle. We're going to make a copy of the layer by clicking on the Sun layer and dragging it down on top of the New Layer button. And then we're going to double click on the Sun Copy layer and rename it Type on Top. Type on Top. Meaning that's going to be the type on the top of the circle. So click OK. And then we're going to go back to the Layers panel here and we're going to hide the type on the top layer. Click on the eyeball and then click on the Sun layer. Now, we have our black arrow chosen, our selection tool. Let's click and drag around that circle to select it. Now, we don't see the bounding box, but we can tell that it's selected. And what we're going to do is turn this into the sun. So let's do a, uh, first of all, let's color it, fill it with a uh, sort of an orange color. Uh, we'll go uh, up to the swatches panel and click on an orange color there, like that. And let's uh, go over to the Tools panel here and bring the Stroke Indicator icon to the front and click on the little None symbol. So now we have that orange fill and no stroke. And let's go under the Effect menu and give this a special effect. We'll go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and let's choose Zigzag. Okay, and with preview checked, we can see that it's changing. Let's go ahead and keep the size 0.14 inches, but I'm going to tab down and make the ridges uh, per segment 10. And we're going to keep it corner zigzag instead of a smooth zigzag. That looks a little bit more like a sun. So let's go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to go down and lock the sun layer. So we'll go back to the Layers panel put a little padlock next to the on the sun layer and then we're going to show the type on top layer click on the eyeball and select the type on top layer okay now we can see the sun peeking out outside around the circle um, let's go ahead and bring the fill indicator to the front and we'll with our black arrow we'll click and drag around the circle and let's go back to the Tools panel here and click on the None symbol just so that the circle has no fill. That way we can see the sun better. Now what we'll do is we will scale the circle so it's bigger than the sun before we put the type on the circle. So let's double click on the Scale tool and let's do a uniform scale of 125%. We're not going to check scale, strokes, and effects. Uh, so let's do a uniform scale of 125%. Because we double-clicked on the Scale tool, it scaled from the center, which is good, because we want to keep this circle concentric with the circle that we used to create the sun. So now uh, um, I'm going to create the type outside the circle before uh, pasting it onto the circle. So I'm going to go into the Select menu to Deselect. And I'm going to get my Type tool, Horizontal Type tool, and make some point text by just clicking once with the type tool and typing the words blue sky. And then I'm going to do a command A or control A to select all the type and go over here to the character panel and I'm going to make it Myriad Pro black. Now if you don't have black just choose bold. 
but I'm going to choose Marine Pro Black. And then I'm going to change the point size to 70 point. So I'll look and see if 70 point is in here, uh, and it's not. So I'm just going to click on the little symbol next to the point size field to highlight the field, and I'm going to type in 70, and then hit the tab key. And now my type is Marine Pro Black, 70 point. Um, and I'm going to go up to the swatches panel and just choose a blue and color the type blue. And I'm going to go back down to the paragraph panel and choose center alignment. So now my point text is center aligned. And I'm going to go back and get my black arrow just so that I can take a look at the type. And I'm going to go ahead and change the tracking on the type, in other words, the space between the letters. So even though I have my black arrow selection tool chosen, I can double click on the type in order to turn the black arrow into the type tool. And I'm going to do a Command A or Control A to select all the type. And I'm going to go back over here to the character panel. And I'm going to go ahead and track it. So I'm going to click on the little tracking icon right here. And I'm going to go ahead and um, Let's see, track at minus 50. Minus 50, and then hit the tab key, and the letters have now moved closer together. And I'm going to go into the Edit menu to copy. So I'm going to copy that text, and then go back to the black arrow. And I really don't need this text anymore since I just copied it, so I'm going to hit the Delete key and delete that text. Now with my black arrow, I'm going to select the circle, and this is going to become the path for the text. And when I paste the text onto the circle, the uh, black stroke around the circle will disappear, but we'll still be able to see the type. Um, and I'm going to go get the Type on a Path tool. So I'll click on the Type tool and go down and find Type on a Path tool. But even though I want the type on the top, I'm going to click on the bottom of the circle. So I'm going to roll the Type on a Path tool over the very bottom of the circle until the light, lightning bolt is about over the path, and I'm going to click once. And then I'm going to go on, up under the Edit menu to Paste. And because the type was centered before, it's now centered on the top of the circle. And the next thing I'm going to do is make a duplicate of this layer. So I'll go back down here to the Layers panel, and I'm going to drag the Type on Top layer on top of the New Layer button at the bottom, and make a copy. And now I'm going to hide the Type on Top layer, click on the eyeball, and just save that for Layer, and then I'm going to click uh, double-click on the Type on Top Copy layer, and rename it. So I'll double-click on Type on top copy, and let's rename it type on bottom. So this will become the type on the bottom. And click OK. And I'm going to get my black arrow selection tool, and then double click on this type. And when I do that, the black arrow turns into the type tool. I'm going to do a Command A or Control A to select all the type, and type in hotel and spa. Hotel and spa. Now we need to get that type at the bottom of the circle. And so the first thing we're going to do is go back and get the black arrow. The type is still selected, but we're going to double click on the rotate tool and rotate 180 degrees. So click OK. And now the type is at the bottom, but it's going the wrong direction. So what we're going to do next is we're going to highlight the type. With the, uh, I'm going to get the black arrow selection tool, double click on the type to turn into the type tool, do a Command A or Control A to select all, and we're going to use uh, a type on a path option by going up to the object menu and going to where it says, I'm sorry, go into the type menu to where it says Type on a Path, and then we're going to go to Type on a Path Options. 
Okay, we get different effects here, but what we want to do is we want to flip the type so it's right reading, so it can read from left to right. So let's click on the word flip and click on the word preview. Yep, now the type reads correctly, but it's inside the circle instead of outside the circle, so we'll have to fix that. So click on OK. Now that we've flipped the type, we can go ahead and shift the baseline so that the type moves out moves outside of the circle. So we're going to go over here to the character panel and we can't see the baseline shift features so we're going to double we're going to click on the little arrows next to, to the left of the word character and then click again and now we can see the baseline shift symbol right here. And we click on that and we're going to try minus 45. So type in minus 45 for the baseline shift and hit the tab key. Good. Now the letters have moved outside the circle uh, the way we'd like them to be, but there's an awful lot of space between the letters. And so we need to reduce that so the letters look better. So the words look better. We'll go back over here to the character panel and click on the tracking symbol and to highlight that field and let's try let's try minus 225 and click the tab key and that looks pretty good um, those letters are looking pretty good I think if I just click between the H and the O I could kern that space and make it a little bit tighter so I'm going to hold down the option key or alt key and hit the left arrow and that's a way to manually kern type. You click in between two letters, hold down the Alt key or the Option key, and hit the left and right arrows. So now I'm going to release the Option key or Alt key and just move over and we're going to do some more kerning. I'm going to move over until my cursor is between the S and the P and I'm going to hold down the Option key or Alt key and hit the left arrow to move those letters closer together. And then release the Option key or Alt key move the right arrow key so that now my cursor is between the P and the A. I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt key and click the left arrow a little bit until the letter A moves closer to the P. Um, I see that the ampersand is too close to the L, so I'm going to release the Option key and Alt, or Alt key, move the cursor back over so it's between the L and the ampersand, hold down the Option key, or the Alt key, oops, I'm not between, the, there we go, and move the right arrow, click the right arrow until there's more space to the left for the ampersand. So it just takes a lot of experimenting, uh, kerning between letters until finally the letters on the curve look pretty good. Um, it's a challenge. So the next thing we're going to do is go into the select menu to deselect and go back down to the Layers panel and we'll click on the eyeball on the Type on Top layer to reveal what's on that layer and now look back at our artboard and we're getting there. We're getting something that looks pretty good, something that looks like a logo.